Hey everybody, Will here from EduCenter, and today I'd like to share with you the technology acceptance model. Now the technology acceptance model is a framework that allows a person to understand the cognitive processes within users and how they'll respond to adopting and integrating a new piece of technology within their life. Now a new piece of technology doesn't have to just refer to a piece of hardware like an iPad or laptop. It can also refer to things like software and online learning communities. But before I get started, if you are new to the channel, please consider helping us out by subscribing and hitting that notification bell. And if you go on to enjoy today's video, make sure you hit that like button and let me know in the comment section below if you think this uh, model could be applied for other things, maybe like YouTube, creating videos, how we can use it on Twitter, things like that. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. Now, the Technology Acceptance Model, or TAM for short, was first created by Fred Davis and Richard Bogosi in 1989. And in their paper, they came to this conclusion that people form attitudes and intentions to try toward trying to learn to use the new technology prior to initiating efforts directed at using. Or simply put, a person will make a cognitive decision and create a bias without ever interacting with a piece of technology first. Meaning that they're bringing in certain attitudes and they're looking at certain aspects like ease of use and usefulness of that technology and if they can make it work for them. Now, TAM is the most widely used model for understanding the processes of a user, but there are also several revisions that I'd like to look at too today. The first being TAM2, and the next being the Unified Theory of Acceptance and Use of Technology, or UTOT for short, because that is a mouthful. <laughs> um, anyways, the technology acceptance model really looks like this. You first have your external variables. This could be a person's predisposition to a certain type of technology, like a computer or an iPad. Uh, they could be coming in with other things like uh, if they've used something similar to it, that's an external variable. But those are going to create two sets of things that a user is looking at. First off, perceived usefulness and then perceived ease of use. Perceived usefulness meaning do they think it's useful to their everyday life and the perceived ease of use is how much training is going to be needed. Can I pick this up and go or am I going to have to be reading technical manuals before I can even get started? From there, we see that the perceived ease of use will actually influence the perceived usefulness. So if something's really, really hard to use, that's going to influence a person's understanding of how useful something is. Most people, cognitively speaking, are very lazy. They want to be able to pick up a new piece of technology and they want to use it right away without really having to open up a how-to guide. So going from there, those two things will create a specific attitude toward using the piece of technology. Now that attitude could be a positive attitude or a negative attitude. And that's what leads us to this behavioral intention to use, or behavioral intention, I should say. The behavioral intention is a positive use. If they think that it's going to be useful and easy to use, then of course they're going to actually use it. If there's a negative intention, then they're not going to use it, or more likely will not use it, is a better way to say it. Next, the TAM revision model 2 looks like this, and it breaks it down a little more for us to understand. We can see it's mostly the same uh, in the understanding of perceived usefulness, ease of use, and then how that flows into the usage behavior. But there's a lot of factors that TAM revision 2 looks at. First off, the subjective norm, does the person find it useful, just in general? Uh, what kind of image do they have in their head? Is it relevant to their job? Is it going to produce a higher quality content than what they already are doing? And can you produce a result very similar to what you see the company producing? On top of that, you get some other things that uh, influence the idea of usefulness, like a person's previous experience. So someone who already knows how to do photo editing, for instance, is more likely to pick up Photoshop and start using it immediately, opposed to someone who's never touched Photoshop before. And of course, the voluntariness of their attitude, are they willing to do it? And if they're willing to do it, that's going to really flow into the idea that there is a strong intention to use it, they're making that choice. Whereas if it's forced upon them, which we see a lot of time in the education field where a new 
piece of technology is forced upon someone to use, uh, that's going to affect the intention of use because it's creating some specific attitudes with it. Next is the unified theory of acceptance and use of technology, and this is really more of a breakdown or a more specific breakdown that we see of the original TAM model. We can see that there's a performance expectancy, effort expectancy, social influence and facilitating conditions, and then other things that apply to it like gender, age, experience, and if a person's willing to use it, if it's voluntary or if it's forced upon. The area that I want to take away most from the unified theory is social influence because social influence I believe has a key factor on whether or not adoption of a piece of technology is going to be widely done throughout say a school system. The social influence can come from say an actual influencer, someone famous who's saying use this, it's really good, to even just the popular person if you want to put it like that within the business. Uh, that social influence can be both positive and negative too. It's important to remember that. If you have like, uh, for instance, in the education field, you have a rock star teacher who is just constantly trying new things uh, and what they say influences other people to try adopting new things as well. As long as it's positive coming from them, then the person who's trying out the new piece of technology, looking at whether or not they're going to adopt it into their own processes within their own classroom, they're going to come in with a higher positive attitude. Whereas if you have somebody completely, you know, trashing a, a new system, then of course that's going to affect other people and how they view the system as well. So what does this all really mean for using TAM and UTAT as an evaluation process? Well, first off, the thing you need to ask when you're using these models, trying to understand whether or not somebody within your system is going to adopt a piece of technology, is first you need to identify that person. You need to identify your users or your stakeholders. Who's going to have the uh, most interactions with the product? From there, ask yourself these specific questions. Will they find this an easy to use system? Uh, what is going to be the barrier to entry to it? Do they need to do a lot of back learning to understand what's happening now? Uh, basically, is, is it easy user friendly? Next is how much training is going to be required. Are you going to have to develop multiple professional development days or create multiple training seminars on it? Or can you do it in one? Or can you even just send it out as an email on how to use it? Then, will they find the system useful to their life? This is a tough one because this is really looking uh, kind of in a broad scope of how people might use it. Each person is an individual and they're going to have their own individual responses to it. But overall, if you think uh, everyone as a group is going to find this system more useful to their life, than the current system that you're using, then yeah, definitely, that's great. And then finally, what potential attitudes may be developed by your users during implementation? Sometimes it's really easy to look at the beginning process and the end process, but the implementation process is the real nitty gritty details. And are, are the problems that are going to come up during implementation going to really negatively affect your users? Next, once you've done that, identify some immediate challenges you're going to face and some immediate barriers to entry. Doing that will allow you to create a process to overcome those right away. Then identify immediate benefits of the system. Use this as your selling point. You know, it's important that we let people know what might be an issue, but it's more important to let them know why it's going to be an immediate benefit. And then finally, which influencers within your setting can you use to promote be positive behavior intentions for use of the new technology that you're trying to adopt? Anyways, if you found this video helpful, if you learned anything new, make sure you hit that like button and please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you can always get the latest content from EduCenter. And hey, thanks for watching.